guys. Um, I don't know if I even mentioned that I was getting one of these, uh, but this is a, well, Holzforma calls it an edge mill. So it's a type of chainsaw sawmill that has uh, guides that run on a board, and then you screw the board to the log, and, and uh, this apparatus attaches to the saw and follows the guides and cuts you a straight line. Vertical cut chainsaw miller, for lack of a better term. <laughs> hey, look at that, a zippered tool bag with a broken zipper. <laughs> I wonder why you can get it open. There it goes. White gloves. More wrenches. So, these are the guide rails that have to be screwed onto a board, which we will do in a little bit. But they're aluminum. And I don't know if you can see that profile, but they got two screws in them. You just line them up down the board. I guess these are what, maybe two feet long? And there's five of them, so it gives you about 10 feet. Here's the handle for the apparatus that you're pushing. I don't know what all these other things are, but we'll find out. Obviously this holds the chainsaw. Interesting. Guard. This is the piece that drives on the rail. And a whole bunch of bolts and nuts and screws and such. And there's the handle for the zipper. And one way screw. Two of screws now. There's a hole in this bag. instructions that come with it. <laughs> this might be a bit of a challenge. Okay, the instructions are not real clear. Click this into high speed, you can watch me struggle with it in high speed so you don't have to sit there and like wait forever for me to get it put together. I also need to get screwdrivers.
Okay, so <clears throat> observations. They put the label, the warning label, on the wrong side of the uh, uh, shield. So now you have to kind of turn around and look at it. And since the saw goes here, I'm thinking that's probably not a great idea. So, Post Pharma, if you're watching, this is on the wrong side. It also makes their name appear backwards. So this could be either it's on the wrong side or they drilled the two holes on the wrong side of the shield because obviously when I had the name and the label facing back, which is I thought that would be, uh, it was over here into the handle area. But uh, yeah, this, uh, that and then the handle, according to this sheet, goes inside of here. It won't fit out here because of the ribs on the on this uh, guide. Um, so, yeah, it spaces this out here, so you're left with, if you want to keep this parallel to this, which this is just a guide that you keep down on the board as you're, as you're running the saw down. That's what pushing on this does. So it keeps the blade at 90 degrees to your, your guide rail. Um, so it doesn't really have to be straight, it doesn't matter, but it would look nicer if it was straight. So either this bolt needs to be machined about a quarter of an inch, the shoulder, a quarter of an inch further out, or there needs to be some kind of a spacer that can be put on right there, which I will probably make something and put on there later. Uh, that bolt there fit really, really tight. Doesn't You have to turn it with a wrench. The other one, you screw right in. Uh, these are the pinch bolts for the saw itself. So uh, I thought it a little unusual that this is welded on instead of this being threaded out here and you tighten this these plates together and that does, holds it. But instead, these two pinch bolts hold the bar. So I find that kind of odd. So anyway, I do need to get it. Uh, I'm going to have to get a socket to get in on the bolt back here. Uh, the little ribs on the end of the handle where the metal, where the pipe is squished flat, uh, you can't get a wrench into it. Or maybe I can. Let's see. Can I come from the end and get it? Well, not really. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to have to get a socket on that. The, the, the wrench that they send with it is too wide and hits the... Yeah. You get what I'm saying. So other than that, it's <clears throat> it's TIG welded well. It, it looks like nice solid welds on it. I'll be curious to see how it does. We're going to put the uh, 388, the G388 into it, and uh, try milling a log, make a beam, something like that. We'll try it out anyway. But that'll wait until this afternoon when it warms up a bit. It's cold outside. So I cut myself a 2x6, 10 feet long. It is not exactly the straightest in the world. So instead of following the edge of the uh, board with these, I'm going to put a chalk line down and follow that. And from what I can see, as far as these are go, as far as the way they fit with the uh, little middle piece, uh, they need to be about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the board. So that'll give me a line to follow. That'll be nice and straight. Seems to work so far. Alright, see if we can get a chainsaw in. It's 
my understanding is you want the bottom of the blade facing forward. Trying to get it centered here. Okay, so now I need to adjust this side to get this flat. Of course, the saw is hitting the board just a bit. Let's go out here where it's closer. We're going to have to get that spacer in there so that it'll tighten down properly. I'll be back. Alright, so I got some washers. I don't know if you can see in there, but I put about three washers in there and that seems to be what it needed. And then I uh, had to take both bolts loose to get them on there, but that's not a big deal. I also filed the uh, corners of this round since this slides on the uh, board. I figured that'll help uh, let it slide a little easier. It won't be catching or dragging on the wood. And I also smoothed off the inside corners of these so it's not catching anything on the aluminum and dragging. I'm hoping that all helps. We'll see. Uh, one thing I don't like, and see if I can get you situated there, the plastic guard here is like right up against the muffler so I don't know if this is just the wrong saw to put in this thing or if this needs to be well that's the only way it can mount so or if I can turn the saw around and run it on the top side of the blade if I do that though then the uh, ejection is coming back towards me and I'm not real fond of that idea but I think I'm going to take it out there and see if we can get it to uh cut some uh, logs. So this is a little piece of hedge. Why hedge? Well it was the only log I had that was under 10 feet. Over 10 feet goes on the big sawmill. So let's see if we can uh, get the saw started. <laughs> Might have to take it down to do that. We'll try it up here. Yeah, yeah take it down. Ugh.
saw is sliding in the clamps, so apparently I don't have tight enough. And uh, this is just a regular uh, cross-cut chain, if you will. It's a full chisel, full teeth. It's not a ripping chain at all. It's at sharp and 30 degrees. So it's a little slower on this uh, since I'm cutting end grain, basically. But uh, that's why I put it at an angle, hoping that would help it speed up. Let me get the wrench, tighten it up. I forgot to fill the tank before I started this. Remember to put my uh, earmuffs on too, and my gloves. So I should have had uh, some wedges in here because it got to bouncing out there when I was uh, going through that area. But other than that, it does the job. Uh, I'm not real happy with the pinch bolt system on it. I think I can make it better, make some improvements to it. Uh, perhaps actually drilling the bar and letting the bolts go into the bar would solve the issue. Uh, but it's a brand new bar. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to make another cut and uh, see if I can square this thing up. I'm just going to make a beam out of it.
square. It's a little out, but then again, it was cut with a chainsaw. So, not going to be perfect. I can probably adjust that guide a little bit and get it closer. But... So I did, and I probably put this in the comments by now, but I did run down to the hardware store and buy a new bolt for this one because the uh, one that came with it, it stripped, which is why it wasn't holding. Put this one in, tighten it up, and it's holding just fine. So we're doing okay. But uh, yeah, you know, for the, the minor things like a stripped bolt or uh, not having the spacers, the price on I think is around seventy dollars. Uh, comparable ones are like one hundred and fifty, so not too bad. I mean, the uh, the guide part of it works just fine, and uh, it holds the saw. I wish that it didn't have so much wasted cutting area up here, but if you leave that guard on, uh, the splash guard or whatever you want to call it, that's what's going to be a, that's going to be up there. Uh, I suppose you could take this off if you wanted to risk it and drop it down a little further and be able to cut a bigger beam. And it would probably also do better with a rip chain where I've got a, a regular chain on here. So I will probably uh, make me a rip chain for this one because 20 inch chains I can I can get cheap around, around local. Uh, but this is a steel bar and chain that's on it right now. And uh, I think it did pretty good for just a regular chain. It's uh, definitely different than uh, using an Alaskan style mill or my bandsaw mill. Uh, as it gets into that thicker part it was it was quite the push. But then again this is hedge and it's frozen. So <laughs> which also means that this blade by now is there this chain by now is dull as the dickens because it was cutting ice. But yeah there you go guys. I will leave a link uh, to this little device in the uh, description, but uh, it's another one from Holzforma. Kind of like that company. Uh, they actually uh, contacted me after seeing all the chainsaw videos of theirs that I'm putting up and uh, offered to send me uh, one of the new G444s. So uh, supposedly that shipped a couple days ago, so hopefully within the next uh, week and a half. Uh, We'll unbox and review one of those. The big brother to this one. And that's already a big saw. It's actually one cc less, but it's almost a full horsepower more power. So I'm really curious about uh, checking it out. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.